Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Montu Motors in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have an iconic JDM car that you probably have never even heard of. But in reality, maybe some of you do remember it. This is a 1994 Mitsubishi FTO. But before we dive into this small little pint-sized sports coupe, this JDM Classic, let's talk a little bit about Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, this brand from Japan, so iconic for so many years. Of course, when I say Mitsubishi, everybody who is in the know always thinks Lancer Evolution. Well, guess what? They made some other great cars, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, the Mitsubishi Eclipse. This FTO was actually never imported into the United States. They made it from 1994 to 2000, never imported into the United States, but because of that 25 year rule that they have, once a car is 25 years or older, we now can bring it to the United States. Now, some of you, like I said, maybe know what this FTO is without actually ever seeing one in person. If you ever played the original Gran Turismo for the original Sony PlayStation, the FTO was the first car that you were given to start your driver's racing license program, and that's where you really learn car control and skill. And guess what? This actual car, same exact story. It's about learning that skill to develop into faster cars. So let's go ahead. I want to dive into this Mitsubishi FTO and find out what really happened to Mitsubishi and are these the type of car, types of cars that they need to bring back to get back to that place where they were once at. Right off the bat, the styling, very, very small. You come to the front. When in the 1990s, it's so easy to identify a 1990s car because the design was all about very rounded shapes. Headlight housing has a, a mixture of a Toyota Supra, um, uh, a Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I love the way it's all blacked out on the interior. Nice, clean design coming into this lower area with more exterior lighting, no fake vents, nothing stuck on, just very small, light, nimble, and clean on the design. Now, when we come across the front fascia, you can see how the hood really slopes down. And at this angle, you can see some of that Supra look in there, almost like a Jaguar F-type style going on. But you have your Mitsubishi logo stamped right into that front nose area. The wire mesh grill is going to force feed air into all the radiators and cooling for this engine underneath this small hood. And then this lower sort of like lip spoiler area is going to also help not only scoop in air, but give you a little downforce as well, because that's all about generating that air over and around the car. Now, when we get up onto the hood, love the lines. They start right here on the front fascia, get very prominent as you work your way all the way towards the windshield, nice raised area. Everything else is smooth and you have two nice fenders so that when you're sitting behind the wheel, which remember this is right hand drive because it's a JDM import, allows you to have a perfect vantage point of hitting those turns as you're going down your favorite twisty road. Now, when we get to wheel and tire setup, this one has these custom works wheels, nice style, machine aluminum, the flat black finish, really, really clean with the style of this car. Now, if you're wondering, well, what is the size of this wheel? You're basically looking at a 17 inch wheel. Behind there, you're gonna have fully ventilated uh, rotors and you can see our brake setup, but this is the type of stuff that you get when you import these vehicles. A lot of times they're gonna have modifications that were done over in Japan, and this brand of wheel is very well known and I think works great with the black on this particular FTO. Now, as we go down the side fender, you do have your side marker lights, color matched on the mirror caps, just the proportions of the car from the side, it almost looks a little bit like a Mitsubishi Eclipse, which that makes sense. But also the roof has a design that's similar to a BRZ or an 86. You can see that there's a raised area above the driver and the passenger. Everything coming into this rear quarter window and a very nice prominent side sill extension it really allows that airflow to come down the side of the car. Now, when we get to the rear, Nice size rear spoilers. So many different cars in the 1990s had different size spoilers. This one has a nice height to it, not too high, not too low. You have this pedestal in the center to help split that air. And then the way the tail is, it almost reminds me of a Mercedes AMG GT. 
the way it kind of angles back. You got a little bit of curve to the trunk lid, the FTO name stamped in, no badges or anything. Everything is stamped into the bodywork. And then as we come across to the side, you're just gonna have a simple dual outlet exhaust that's actually staggered. This one sticks out just a little bit further than the one to the right, but very, very clean lines and a, a very unique car. Let's go ahead, pop the hood and see what's powering this FTO. All right, guys, we got the hood popped on this 1994 Mitsubishi FTO. The first thing I want to point out is that you actually have adjustable coilovers. This car is sitting about an inch lower than your standard FTO. Add that with the custom wheels. You could also see the custom intake. These are mods that were done over in Japan that happen to still be in the car, you know, in the car at delivery at Montu. But the great news is look how clean that engine compartment is for a car from 1994. That is impressive and it's so clean. I'm probably gonna eat my lunch off of it as soon as we're done filming. But what you're looking at is a two liter, yes, a two liter V6, very small displacement V6, 197 horsepower, 148 pound feet of torque. It's all routed through a five speed manual transmission. The car weighs around 2,668 pounds and does zero to 60 in about 6.9 seconds, depending on how good you are at shifting through that five-speed manual. You can see that it is front wheel drive. And overall, like I was saying, besides the modifications that were done, very, very clean. You can see the 2000, up here it says 2000, that means it's a two liter. I don't know if you ever have that question, but a 2000 is a two liter, and that has the MyVac system that Mitsubishi helped develop with their uh, valves, intake, exhaust, and everything. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire up this FTO and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside this 1994 Mitsubishi FTO. It's a little bit of a time capsule. And for me, 1994, I was graduating from high school. It does bring some memories back, even though this car wasn't available in the United States. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, how much is this car? You're looking at a price tag around $18,900. But I think what's going to blow your mind is just the originality of how well this car has been preserved over all these years. Let's go to the door panel. Now the door panel screams 1994. You have a large cloth area, which I am gonna zonk that. I don't know whoever came up with the idea to put cloth on a door panel like that, especially the armrest. I do like the textured grip there to close the door. Very small pocket, door pocket. It literally is like a mail slot. If you put a Twinkie in there, you're gonna squeeze cream everywhere. Maybe one taco, and that's a big maybe. Dash, look at this, no cracks. Usually these dashes are beat to hell by the sun. No cracks. You have this nice gauge pot up here. Now my zonk is, is that they put a clock in it. I guess that's nice to know what time it is, but it would have been even nicer to have oil pressure and a voltmeter. Drop down, you do have working AC in this car. And then here's 1994 all over again. Somebody swapped out the stock stereo system for this custom unit, but it does have a cassette tape here. So you could get your Milli Vanilli cassette tape, drop it in there. You have a nice cubby down here for your 1994 Jolly Ranchers. And then you have, like I was saying, that five-speed manual transmission. Now, the throws are a little on the longer side, but you know what? Very slick shifting, and I like the engagement that you get. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, where's all the cup holders? Guess what? In 1990s, we didn't have cup holders. They did give you this nice little square opening here that you could put some uh, Skittles. It's interesting because it does have a circle inside the square, so I guess you could put a water bottle there, but as soon as you take a turn, it's gonna fall out. Hard as a rock on the armrest, you do have the good old-fashioned e-brake. Open this up, this is where you're gonna put your Twinkies. So don't put your Twinkies in the door pocket, you're just gonna squeeze cream in here. You could easily put 12 to 14 of them, depending on how stuffed you put them in there. Seats, straight out of 1994. The colors, the graphics, the texture, you know what? They're comfortable as heck. And the wear on them, it was well, well kept, whoever owned this over the years. Now, you do get a back seat in the car. Let me go ahead, and I'm not getting back there, because they're kind of on the small side via 
like a BRZ or an 86, but you do have that rear seat capability, which is nice. And I do like the bolstering, just enough bolstering to make it interesting and they're super comfy. I got plenty of headroom in here. And remember, I'm six feet tall, but while we go ahead, why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this FTO. All right, guys, inside the FTO, the business end, you can see just how nicely the, the seat holds you. You have the FTO name on the sill as you come in and out. And of course, you got the three pedals. Manual transmission only in this car as the way it should be. Steering wheel, original steering wheel with the Mitsubishi logo. Look at that, no Bluetooth, no buttons, it's just a horn. And then dash, simple, clean, clear, concise. You have your tack that screams all the way up to 8,000 RPM speedometer, coolant, and fuel. 8,000 RPM. Remember, this is a two liter V6. Overall, very well put together. And I'm telling you, it's a little bit of a time capsule. Why don't we go ahead though? Let's check out the trunk and see how usable a space the FTO has back there. All right, guys, we got the trunk popped. What's amazing is not only the amount of space, but look at how well preserved the trunk is. Normally that would have stains all over it, crumbs, maybe an old piece of pizza with hair growing on it. Back here, you don't get that. You get tons of space. That's what makes these cars so great. And it's a shame that they never brought it to the United States. We had to wait until 2020 for us to finally enjoy this amazing FTO from 1994. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and see how this JDM Classic drives. All right, guys, we're inside the 1994 Mitsubishi FTO. We just left Montu Motors. One thing that's blowing my mind is just how strong this engine is in this car. Really pulls nicely, starts up on the first turn of the key. Remember, no push button start, any of that mumbo jumbo. And obviously the experience is not only magnified because you're on the right-hand side of the vehicle, but also being in a car that's so light with so many revs that are usable. 8,000 RPM redline. But going down the road, nice and solid, super smooth. I love the feeling I'm getting to the steering wheel even after all these years. And that shifter, I'm telling you, shifts nice, and smoothly which is great all right guys i want to do a little acceleration test we're in second gear from a slow roll on throttle here we go let it scream look at this 8,000 rpm i love the induction noise you get and as you go higher higher in the rev range the sound gets magnified of course even more from such a small V6, two liter. 99% of the time, anytime I say two liter on Radius Rise, we're talking about an inline four engine. This is a naturally aspirated V6. All right, guys. Once again, let's do some on throttle. We're in first gear, on throttle. Yeah! Tell you, it pulls all the way up to 8,000. Wow, I'm impressed. I really am impressed with just the power delivery. Now, obviously down low, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 RPM, there really isn't much of anything. But boy, once you go above six, she pulls all the way to 8,000 RPM. That's what you get from that naturally aspirated engine. Nice power delivery once you get in that sweet spot of the rev range. handles nice as well I mean we're not gonna push it by any means but overall you can feel how balanced the chassis is and it makes sense why they chose this car to be that first vehicle you get on Gran Turismo the original Gran Turismo I tell you I love that sound 6,000 rpm and you still got more room that's the crazy thing but just driving on the road, the car is very, very smooth. Very smooth, very comfortable. And that really just goes in to show the type of product that they were building back in 1994. Let's see how she handles in this left-hand bend here. 
whatever, front wheel drive, I'm not pushing it, we're on older tires, older technology. But coming out of the turn, on throttle. to drive here in the United States. I mean, how crazy is that? I remember playing Gran Turismo with this car and now I'm actually driving it. And the best news is I get to share with all of you guys. So that's what makes it even more special. And I definitely want to thank Montu Motors for allowing us access to their inventory that they bring over every month. Check their website out. They have some interesting cars that of course, not only they'll have in their possession, but that means that we'll have here on Rady's Rides for you to enjoy. All right guys, pulling away from the light. Nice light clutch feel. It's got a good pickup point. Super smooth. Here we go, on throttle. It's a smile on your face. I don't know why, but it just puts a smile on your face because it's such a unique car. And to know that, hey, don't even look at the tachometer because you got another 3,000, 4,000 RPM to go before you're at redline. That's the best part of it. And so agile. The chassis is very, very agile and set up nicely. And it just goes to show, look what Mitsubishi was producing back in 1994. It just goes to show, temp gauge is smack dab in the center. Everything else, no sputtering, nice and smooth. I am very impressed with this FTO and I'm so glad that we could share with you. But we're gonna go ahead, get back to Montu Motors and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been one heck of a day with this JDM. Mitsubishi FTO, fun to drive. Definitely want to thank Sam, Jeremy, and Jack, all at Montu Motors for allowing us access to this freshly imported Mitsubishi product. It really goes to show that, man, the 1990s had some really fun cars and the Japanese brands were just on a totally different level than where they are today. And it's a shame that small cars like these are finding are, are coming harder and harder to find brand new at the dealerships but if it's jdm cars like these that you want us to keep looking at keep driving and keep bringing to you leave that in the comment section if you're new and you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile come back for more if you are a subscriber thank you for being part of the radius rise family if you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel click the link in the description get yourself some radius rise merch got to give it up to big guns mcgee standing out here in the florida sun getting this fto he's loving it thank you tom for your hard work and just like always guys i'll see you on the next ride